I don't know when this video is dropping, but I want to tell everybody around the world, I hope everybody is blessed, well, and healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life. Oh, man. Till Taylor Swift. Just kiss it. And Ice Spice and all of them. This NFL script was written so good. All oh, the Super Bowl. They rigged it up and rigged the plan so well. Oh, man. They missed like 2015 holding calls. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Matt. Be great. This one's titled The Super Bowl Was Scripted. The Super Bowl Was Rigged. The Super Bowl... It's for them to make all that good money, to take in all the Swifty fans, to make all the Swifty fans bring all the revenue in. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I love y'all, man. I hope everybody is doing well, man. That 2024 treats you well. I love y'all, man. Look how this thing starts. You got Joe Biden, just like we drew it up. Sleepy Joe. They say Joe ate some ice cream and some oatmeal this morning and went right back to bed. Amen. <laughs> Joe, I'm not paying my taxes this year. Joe, I'm not paying the debt collectors. Nobody, I'm not paying no taxes this year. Uh, Joe, you got to come get me. You, uh, brother Sam, and all y'all got to come get me this year, Joe. Ah. <laughs> but let's check out this video. Super Bowl was scripted, and I'm pretty sure all y'all been saying that, especially in my comment section. Y'all been going crazy, man. And if you miss my highlights. Uh, reaction. I went crazy in that video. Uh, we did the halftime performance. We did miss the beautiful Reba, you know, with the uh, with the national anthem. So, hey, if you missed those videos, go check them out. But let's have some fun with this one, man. Let's see what they what, what Matt is talking about, buddy. If you don't want to take my word for it, here's what Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Listen up, buddy. Listen if you up, don't buddy. Want to take my word for it. Here's what Sleepy Joe tweeted out right after the game. Seriously, do y'all want me to go on a rampage and rant? What more do you need to see? I want you to think about this. Some random Joe Schmo, I'm talking about myself by the way, made a video four days ago telling you detail by detail exactly what was gonna happen in this ball game. The video I made four days ago isn't me predicting the future. It's not me knowing something that you guys don't know. It's just acknowledging the cold hard facts about living in the United States and the cold hard facts about the NFL. Love how he puts the disclaimer. Four days ago, February the 7th, 2024. Here's what I do think we're going to see happen. I think the 49ers, they're going to jump out all over them. I expect to see some storybook ending where the 49ers are leading all game and then Patrick Mahomes, he has some all-time legacy drives in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. It just seems like the 49ers are going to run all over them in the first half. Purdy's going to have a couple touchdowns, and then boom, out of nowhere, the Chiefs catch fire. I expect to see some crazy tip passes like in the Lions versus the 49ers game. You're going to see craziness. It's a Super Bowl. You almost got to feel like it's written in the script somewhere that three to four mind-blowing plays are going to happen. And I expect the Chiefs to win this game in crazy comeback fashion. Why do I think that's going to happen? Because it's good for the narrative and also it's good for the longevity of the NFL. You see, this is something a lot of people aren't talking about. The NFL and the college game, just any sport in general, it thrives when you have a villain. Ironically yep. enough, have you noticed? The Patriots dynasty ended and then a new one started right after. The NFL needs dynasties because it keeps casuals tuning in so they can hate watch and root against somebody. Most people tuning into this game don't even know jack squiddly crap about the 49ers. But guess what? Here's what they do know. The Chiefs got Patrick Mahomes. They got the best quarterback in the NFL. So, oh. That guy's the best. I'm rooting against him. It would be extremely beneficial for the NFL to have the Chiefs to go out in here and win this game. I'm telling you. And I got to believe in the script, man. The script tells us that the Chiefs need to and are going to win this game. So that's what I'm going with. And here's the thing about all this. As I've gotten older and slightly matured a little bit, I've learned this. And you'll learn this as well. Some things in life, they're inevitable. And there's nothing you can do about it. And this right here. Yeah, I don't know about the... Uh um, we're just going to talk about the background real quick. Like, even though he's mentioned a lot of good points. <laughs> Y'all don't know about them, them huddle highlights back in the day, man. Did he, watching this remind me of my highlight tape from uh from high school. <laughs> oh, those were the good days, but anyways. 
here is one of those situations. The modern version of the NFL is nothing but pure entertainment. Like the person said in one of the comments, it's the WWE. You can run from it, you can hide from it, the you can WWE. do whatever you want, but destiny is always bound to happen. Hey man, no need to call me a hero. No need whatsoever to call me a hero. I'm just doing my job. That video clip I just showed you guys, that is coming from a video we posted four <laughs> days ago on the channel. Four you days go ago. check it out for yourself. The title of it is, The Super Bowl Script is Inevitable. And I'm going to say this one more time for the people in the back. That was four days ago. Four days Fast ago. Fast forward time to our current date. Here we are, and everything I said was going to happen, or everything I thought was going to happen, it did. To make a long story short here, you saw the game. It just ended. 49ers jumped on them early, and Patrick Mahomes had a crazy comeback. And there was also a bunch of crazy plays that happened as well that we'll get to in just a second. A little foreshadowing here. Hmm. But first things first, though, I do want to throw this in there because sometimes I forget to do it. I always like to congratulate my winners because... You won the game. It's not easy winning the Super Bowl. Not easy at all. When it comes yeah. to football in general, that is at the totem pole. That is at the highest of highs, winning the Super Bowl. So let's do that real quick. Clap it up. Clap it up to the Chiefs. I know a lot of us, we were not rooting for the Chiefs, but they went out there. They took it. They won the game. Patrick Mahomes continues to prove that he is already, at this point in time, early on in his career, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. Where exactly does Patrick Mahomes rank? Well, that's a different conversation for a different day. But there's one thing you can't deny. He is a winner, and y'all know what I've been saying on the channel. I've been saying it the past three, four, five, six years, however long you've been watching. Winners win and losers lose. There's something about winners, and I'm not just talking about football, but you may have a brother, an uncle, a cousin. Everything they do, they win at. If you pay attention in this life to the business world, sports, anything, like I said, just anything in general, winners are always going to somehow, some way, find a way to win. And Mahomes and Andy Reid, they did that again. And the game just got done wrapping up. I made this video and trying to get it out as soon as possible. But looking back on it, the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl with this team and all the problems they had all throughout the year, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't want to sit up here and say I'm shocked. Just due to the fact alone, yeah, Patrick Mahomes and I never cared how bad the Chiefs were struggling throughout the season because I knew Patrick Mahomes, he's lightning in a bottle. He can turn it on within an instant. With an instant. Patrick Mahomes is getting to Dangerous. the level where I'm starting to put him in the category, and I have a very small category of this, people I would never bet against. There's four guys right now is where it stands I would never bet against. Nick Saban, and he just retired, so I guess now he's taking off the list. <laughs> Tom Brady, he retired, so I guess I got to take him off the list as well. Tiger Woods and LeBron James. And I think Patrick Mahomes... I gotta add him to that conversation. He'll replace Tom Brady. He's just that guy, and I'll give y'all my perspective on the situation. Remember in the middle of the season when the Chiefs were struggling, everybody's like, oh yeah, this team isn't good as the previous ones. I never cared. I was never worried for a split second. You know why? Because of who we just talked about, Patrick Mahomes. And I wouldn't even be worried if the Chiefs start out the regular season 0-7 or 0-8. And and as long as you got Mahomes, you got a fighting chance. And Mahomes is so good, he's starting to get to that Brady level where even if you don't necessarily care for him, you still got to respect greatness, and it's almost impossible to hate on him. You never really saw people hating on Brady throughout his career. It was more so of, hey, I'm tired of seeing this guy win all the time, so I want to see him lose. Same thing with Patrick Mahomes, and it sucks that he gets a bad rep, and I was tweeting about this all throughout the game. And if you want to see what I'm saying on Twitter, feel free to follow me. But I was saying, it sucks that Patrick Mahomes does get that bad rep just because of his weirdo of a brother, his insane lunatic of a wife, and most recently, the situation with his dad. He's a part of this crazy family, and I'm not going to sit up here and say he's the humblest guy I've ever seen, but he just takes care of business, and he's not too flashy. He doesn't rub me the wrong way. Whereas, there's another certain player on the Chiefs who, <laughs> and you know who exactly I'm talking about, <laughs> does rub me the wrong way. And I hate to jump on the hype train now because it is popular to hate on him because of what he did during the Super Bowl, but I've always thought he was a slimy guy, and I'm referring to no other than Travis Kelsey. And maybe he is a good dude. I don't know him personally. I'm just giving you the vibes I oh, get from Oh, Travis, him. man. There's just something off about him. I don't know what it is. I've always thought something's off, though. And I could be completely wrong. Maybe he's the ultimate gentleman. Maybe he's this great and super humble guy, but... I don't get that feeling from him. The way I view Travis Kelsey, it's relatively simple. He's a beyond talented athlete. He was gifted with super rare abilities, but unfortunately, he's an egotistical maniac. He reminds egotistic. me of a local frat dude who is a rage monster and has anger problems, but was just blessed with the ability to play football. That's it. Oh, crap. Hold on, hold on. You know what? I'm so glad I did this. I tweeted this out before the game even started. Hold on, hold on. Let me pull it up. Or my bad. Actually, it wasn't before the game. I thought it was. It was right when the game started. It was before the crazy sequence with Andy Reid. 
I tweeted out, I feel bad for the kids growing up now watching Travis Kelsey. When I was growing up, I got to witness Rob Gronkowski. That's a real tight end, and I firmly believe that. And there's some other tight ends you could throw in there. I know a lot of people like Tony Gonzalez, but... For me, Rob Gronkowski, he takes the cake. And as far as it goes for the Andy Reid situation, I'm not even going to talk about that because I just want to talk about the game. But I'll give you this and we got to get a move on. I didn't even want to talk about this as long as I have already. I think Travis Kelsey is more infatuated with himself and his own success than anybody else's or the team's. That's my opinion on him. Now, getting that out the way, congratulations to Patty Mahomes, one of the greatest of all time already. I gave you my opinion on the Travis Kelsey situation. Let's talk about the game. I enjoyed this game from start to finish. It was very, shall I say, college football-esque. It reminded me of a mm. college football game due to the reason there was mistakes left and right. How many fumbles were there in this game? I know there was only like two lost ones. but No, no, no. I think there was three lost ones. But fumbles that the same team recovered, there's about, what, seven or eight? Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. It might be in a box score somewhere. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So check this out. The Chiefs, yeah, I was right. There was about seven or eight. They had five total fumbles, but they only lost one of them. If I were to tell you before the game the Chiefs were going to have five fumbles and they still would win the game, I don't think anybody would have believed me. Heck, I wouldn't have believed myself and vice versa. See, here's the difference maker. San Francisco, they had two fumbles, but here's the kicker. They lost both of them. One of those being early in the game, McCaffrey on the first drive, and at bare minimum, they would have got three points on that drive, but it felt like they was going to score a touchdown. And the other being on that punt return, which also resulted in seven points for the Chiefs. Although the punt return one wasn't on the returner himself because the ball hit one of the blocker guys, it was still a fumble, and it cost them, like I said, seven points. The point is, me bringing that up is, yeah, it felt like a college football game because of all the mistakes, and that's rare to see. We're talking about professionals, and not just any professionals, but two of the top teams in the world. I don't think you'll ever see another Super Bowl in your lifetime where you have seven fumbles in one game. No way. Both teams on the night only had, I believe it was, yeah, yeah, six penalties each, so pretty clean game there. And oh yeah, let me throw this in here because people are gonna bring this up. I thought the officiating was really good, really solid. Didn't see any signs of rigging where the officials wanted one certain team to win. Didn't see that whatsoever. And I was pleased to see that because last year I remember making the same video and I was pissed off because they called that pass interference late in the fourth quarter on the Eagles, which led to the Chiefs kicking the game winning field goal. I still disagree with the pass interference call and I felt like the Chiefs got some calls last year that were wishy-washy, but I digress. This year, I thought the officiating was great and I do think we got to say that because whenever they're bad, we talk about it, but whenever they're good, we don't talk about it and I like to give credit when it's due. And this is the first time I'm even taking a look at this. So the Chiefs had 24 first downs and the San Francisco 49ers had 23. Let's see the rushing yards. I want to see what that looking like. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's it at? Hold on. Okay, here it is. Yeah, 49ers only a buck ten. That's not pretty. And the Chiefs only one thirty. Passing yards. San Francisco had pretty decent two seventy two, and the Chiefs three twenty five. All across the box score, it's really even, except for this one stat that sticks out to me the most. And this is my first time seeing it, so you're getting my live reaction. San Francisco third downs three for twelve. I'm gonna say that again. 3 for 12. 3 for 12. Not atrocious, but it's in the conversation of bad. Vice versa, though, you look at the Chiefs, 9 for 19. Dang near, what is that, 48%? The 49ers jumped out on them early. 10 nothing. McCaffrey, it seemed like Still he was getting we didn't pull yards through, of man. Brock Purdy, he was looking extremely comfortable. I think he completed, what was it, his first five or six passes? I know the 49ers only had 10 points at half, but... It was smooth sailing on the offensive side of the ball. It felt like in the first half, the 49ers were dictating how the Chiefs were playing defense, and they were being the aggressors. However, though, and we'll get to this in just a second, in the second half, the roles reversed. For the Chiefs in the first half on offense, yeah, they only mustered up three points, but I never really felt like they were being shut down by the 49ers. It felt like they were having a lot of self-inflicted wounds and mistakes. And it was really funny because when Jawan Jennings threw that touchdown and San Francisco's up 10-0, I remember thinking to myself, nope. It ain't gonna happen. There's no way a blowout's gonna happen. There's no way. It's not in the script. I knew exactly then and there. Yep, 49ers offense, they're about to struggle, and then the Chiefs, they're about to get back into this game, and as we saw, that's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. You don't happened. gotta be a rocket scientist to see this stuff coming. It's inevitable. And I could sit up here and break down the entire second half, but there's no need to. It was Patrick Mahomes. Enough said. The reason the Chiefs won this game is because of one player and one player only, Mahomes. But... I have a big butt. I'm going to throw this in here. In overtime, when San Francisco, they was driving, and it was... Look at this. Just, just check it out now. See, this is, this is one thing we talked about. Me, the boys, the family, we, we, we talked about this. Some of y'all that's probably watching the video, we talked about this. 
some of y'all saying Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, and the whole script and everything is ran through Hollywood. It's third and four. Jawan Jennings cooked his man for a walk-in touchdown. And Brock Purdy didn't even make a throw towards him because he had to chuck the ball in the back of the end zone because of the pressure that Chris Jones brought yet again. It was similar to the Josh Allen thing last week. I said last week, what am I talking about? My apologies. The week before when they put the Bills. You get what I'm trying to say. If Brock Purdy had better blocking on that third and four, it was an easy touchdown, and I think he makes that throw nine out of ten times. But the reality of the situation is Chris Jones did a heck of a job on the play, and yeah, it resulted in the 49ers taking three points there. And even if he does make the throw and it is a touchdown, it doesn't take away from the fact that Kansas City, they scored touchdowns themselves. All in yep. all, though, Chiefs win, and congratulations to their fans. Again, we, if we make that field goal, we win this game by one point. base and i know how sweet it is but let's get down well, to the nitty-gritty though and let's City, get serious man. here what did i tell you guys four days ago before this game took place i don't believe in the oh well the nfl wants the chiefs to win because taylor swift is dating travis kelsey and if the chiefs continue to win and have all this success then that means more people are going to tune into the Chiefs games and that's going to be more revenue for the nfl i don't believe in that conspiracy theory it's too far-fetched well that's what everybody's saying and they make good sense. But you know what? I don't really believe in stuff like that, kind of stuff like that. But, I mean, it, it, it sounds good, though. And the way the world is ran upon money and, and how, you know, this revenue works and how, you know, all you need is streams and more people to tune into something. And that's this is how, how it works. It doesn't sound like a bad uh, theory, you know. I'm just saying, you guys. Again, I'm not. That's why I'm not just completely bashing it or bashing anyone that is saying this or predicting this. Because hey, one thing this world continues to revolve around is that good old revenue, that good old currency, baby. And that is what this beautiful darling and y'all know we love Taylor Swift, man. We love her music. We, you know, what I'm saying you could call me a Swifty myself. <laughs> But, you know, it's just how it, that's how it is, man. Have you seen what they have bought in? How much the views and everything has won up? How much money they have made since she's been B-rolled in after every play? Especially, don't, get, don't let Kansas City get a first down or Travis Kelsey catch the ball and run for a first down or make a huge catch. Oh, my goodness. Have y'all seen these last couple of weeks? How many times they have showed her? Like the NFL know what they doing. I'm trying to tell you. The cameraman, they literally, they got it planned out. All right, now when they get the first down, I need, I need camera 4B to, to, to zoom in on her sitting in the suite. You need to make sure it's on point. Make sure you get her full reaction. We need her full reaction when she jumps up and down and screams. <laughs> we see this all the time, guys. Famous people date other famous people. This isn't anything that's mind-blowing news for a famous person to date a famous football player. It just so happens, coincidentally enough, the NFL happens to benefit off of this, in which they do. I'm not hiding from that. It's common sense. You now have a couple extra female viewers that wouldn't have tuned in otherwise if Taylor Swift had nothing to do with the game. So I'm not here for the Taylor Swift stuff, but here's what I said four days ago, and I've been saying this. The NFL needs, not a won't, but they need the Chiefs to win these championships, continue to go to the Super Bowls because they're the next dynasty after the Patriots. What does that mean? It means it keeps people engaged, but more importantly, it keeps people hate watching. When yep. you have a dynasty in the NFL, NBA, college football, whatever sport you want to point to, it keeps your casuals tuning in. For your diehard fans, that doesn't really amount to a hill of beans because they're going to watch regardless, but your diehard fans don't make up even, I'd say, 5% of your audience. And let me ask you a question. Do you really think it's a big coincidence that the Patriots, their dynasty ends, and oh, right exactly when their dynasty ends, the new one in Kansas City is starting up? The NFL scripted. It's as simple as that. And the only proof you need is the government is involved with the NFL. 
And I know you're going to have some people saying, Matt, come on, man. Come I respected on, man. you, man. I can't believe you're saying this, <laughs> man. You got to take off the tinfoil hat, dude. Listen up, buddy. If you don't want to take my word for it, here's what Sleepy Joe tweeted out right after the game. This isn't a troll account on Twitter. This is Sleepy Joe's official account. He tweeted out a picture of himself with laser eyes with the caption of, Just, just like, like when we, we drew, drew it, it up. up. <laughs> but seriously, do y'all want me to go on a rampage and rant? What more do you need to see? No, 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 no. We're not doing this on my Sunday night. Don't even get me started up because, uh, no, nah, we're not doing this. And speaking of Sleepy Joe, actually, no. Uh, let me just stop because I'll take down this YouTube channel faster than anything else. <laughs> I was about to say something crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be banned, so we're just going to talk about sports. Anyways, getting back to the football topic before the men in black suit show up to my house and you never see another Matt Be Great video, let's slide it back in here. And I wish I could sit up here and pat myself on the back and brag to you guys about how smart I am and how much of a rocket scientist I am, but I'm not that smart. It's just common sense. The video I made four days ago isn't me predicting the future. It's not me knowing something that you guys don't know. It's just acknowledging the cold hard facts about living in the United States and the cold hard facts about the NFL. I want you to think about this. Some random <laughs> Joe Schmo, I'm talking about myself by the way, made a video four days ago telling you detail by detail exactly what was going to happen in this ball game. And I know some people are going to say, okay, Matt, lucky guess. No, it wasn't a guess. It's easy to see this stuff coming. You got to start looking at things deeper than what they actually are and everything in this life. It'll make 10 times more sense. Money runs the world. And I know it's cliche. That's a phrase you hear. But the quicker you wake up and realize that actually real deal, seriously, money runs the world. Everything you look at, it's going to be different. It's going to change your perspective entirely. Money runs everything. And what brings in the most money for the NFL, which is a government-owned business, is having hate watchers. What brings in hate watchers? Having dynasties. Dynasties. Self-explanatory. You know what's going to happen next. Chiefs are going to win. But you also don't want to be naive and let's just say the next two years the Chiefs suck and then people are going to say, whoa, Matt, what about that conspiracy theory? Well, no, you got to understand the government's not that dumb. They're not going to make them win it every year. They got to water down the success. You know what I mean? Let me put this into a better perspective. They got to water down the success. Oh, yeah. It's like when you're cheating off of somebody in high school. You know oh, what yeah. I'm talking about when you show up to math class at 9.30 a.m. and the teacher goes, <laughs> all right, take out the homework, and you immediately feel that hole in your chest. like, crap, I didn't do it. I didn't do you're it. You're trying to copy down <laughs> off of your buddy next to you some of the answers, and you don't want to copy them directly. You got to get a few wrong. That's what the government does. I could sit up here for the next three hours and go on and on, but that's just <laughs> dumb because what's known doesn't need to be explained. Well, let me know your thoughts down below. But that right oh, man. Shout out to the homie, Matt, man. Good little put together this video. And no, he didn't want to take any uh, copyright claims or any kind of video blocks or anything. So he used um, high school highlights of players. <laughs> I love it, man. I support other creators, man. So that's one thing we're always going to do is support other creators. Let me go and subscribe and drop a like on the video. But hey, man, y'all comment down below how y'all feel. You know what I'm saying about the Super Bowl. Thank y'all for all the love and support on the uh, reactions. Go check out my reaction to the highlights. Go check out my halftime show reaction. And go check out my national anthem of the beautiful Reba. Uh, re uh, me checking that out, man. We had a lot of fun. But, um,. Uh, Someone says, I would like to congratulate Taylor Swift on winning her first Super Bowl. <laughs> as many times they B-rolled in, it's, I feel like I was just watching Taylor Swift the whole game, y'all. You know, sadly. But y'all let me know how y'all feel. Comment down below how y'all feel about the video. Do you feel like the NFL is scripted? Do you feel like the Super Bowl was scripted? Do you believe in the, uh, the conspiracy theory of, of, of Taylor Swift and this whole situation? Comment down below. Yeah. But hey, I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Yay!